Thanks, Josh. Yeah, you're welcome. I started the video when you left, and now they have no idea what we're doing. What just happened? <laughs> I live to confuse <laughs> and to... Listen, we're not even sure that anybody's watching these, so if you are watching with us and joining us for tonight's devotional reading, we are in Luke chapter 12. We ended up needing to take a day off yesterday because it just got to be a really long day. Hectic. So, which is why we actually started reading a couple days in advance here. So, let's pray. Lord Jesus, once again we come to you and ask for a pouring out of your Holy Spirit that we would hear and understand your words. We ask in your name. Amen. Josh, did you say you wanted to start? I would love to start. Go for it. Great. Go ahead, Tom. Warnings and encouragements. What to do and what not to do. Great. Meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousands had gathered so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the ear of the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after they can do no more. But I show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after killing the killing of the body, has power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five okay. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. I tell you, whoever acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. But he who disowns me before men will be disowned, before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When you are brought before the synagogues, rulers, and authorities, do, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. <clears throat> and he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I'll say to myself, You have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself but is not rich toward God. Okay, and we're right here on where it says, do not worry. If you want to, you can read out loud along with me while I read this first part. Okay, let's read it together. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, 
yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet, I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourself that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be, be dressed ready for service and keep your lambs burning, like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants who master, whose master finds them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night. Be under but understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Peter asked, Lord, are you telling us this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord answered, who then is the faithful and wise manager, whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for the ser that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, My master is taking a long time in coming. And he then begins to beat the men servants and maid servants, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of the servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. The servant who knows his master's will and does not get ready, or does not do what his master wants, will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does not things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From every, everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and how distressed I am until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family, divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowd, When you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say, It is going to rain. And it does. And when the south wind blows, you say, It's going to be hot. And it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? 
Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? As you are going with your adversary to the magistrate, try hard to be reconciled to him on the way, or he may drag you off to the judge, and the judge turn you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. Oh my goodness. There is so much in that chapter that we could talk about. Um, and the thing that, you know, is just really jumping out at me is the fact that we are, we just came through an election where we have really begun to understand how divided we are as a country. And Jesus said he came to bring division. And, and that division is going to become even greater than what we've seen already. And so it is really, really important for all of us. Number one, that Jesus is our master and that we listen to what he is saying and that we do what he asks us to do. And it might not make sense to anybody else they might not understand why we do what we do. But as long as we're listening to Jesus and doing what he tells us to do, God is going to take care of us, just like he takes care of the sparrows. Um, we, As we were getting ready to do our pictures tonight, I thought of this scripture as I put on my shoes. You know, my shoes that I found at Walmart for a dollar. I have spent... 30, 40, 100 bucks on other pairs of shoes that were not as comfortable on my feet as that silly $1 pair of shoes at Walmart. That's very telling. And I was very thankful to get them. That's the thing. I, I Hey, when you get shoes that feel good. I like the, the color and, of them. And God Whatever knew, the price. God knew my need. He knew my pocketbook. <laughs> he knew and, and put me in the right place at the right time. Like that one lady in China story. The one lady in China story. The rotten apples. The rotten apples, yep. Bottom line is God provides, whether it's food or clothing. Uh, or a place to live, or a place to sleep, or whatever. Please stop. God provides what we need. And he is worth trusting. Even when, you know, the division can be really severe. Husbands and wives can be divided. Mothers and daughters. You know? It's, it's hard to see the people that we love go a different direction. We know that experience well in this family, and it hurts. All the more important, though, that we love God more. So, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We ask that you help us to find ourselves closer knit with you through your word. And as each of us gets closer to you, I think we're going to find that we're also closer to each other. Lord, for anybody who's watching this and listening, we ask that you draw them closer through your word. Closer to you, closer to their family, closer to their church, closer to their community. Oh Lord, let it be. Amen. Amen. Chocolate time. <laughs> Chocolate and book time. Yay. Yay. And you know what time it is? <laughs> It's a shame we're not going to be recording that. <laughs>